The word toxic fan is something that has been thrown around a lot lately, and although there definitely is some truth to that term, over the last couple of years, it has pretty much only been used to deflect away from bad acting, bad writing, and also toxicity from showrunners themselves towards the actual fan base. Before I jump into another Mary Sue banger where they call everyone toxic, I do think it is important that we first explore where a lot of this terminology is stemming from. First and foremost, it will be disingenuous of me to sit here and say that there is not any toxicity within these fan bases, because there is and I am sure that you have seen them before. You have people who are just unhappy no matter what, people who have a mental breakdown every time they see a gay person or a woman on the screen, and those losers who try to scientifically explain away why black people cannot exist in certain parts. We need to be objective and we need to tell the truth. Those people exist but to pretend that they are a large portion of the fan base would also be extremely disingenuous. I do think it important is to call out this toxic behavior when we see it in the community as it becomes hard to call out the other side when they do the same. With that, let's talk about the other side. The side that has hijacked the term toxic fan in order to deflect away from their poor writing skills, their bad acting, and overall just terrible execution when it comes to certain projects. How many times now have we heard an actor or showrunner refer to fandom as toxic after the show has tanked? It is not a coincidence that only the producers and showrunners of poorly reviewed shows use those terms. The showrunners for Stranger Things and Wednesday is not calling their fan bases toxic. Wonder why Witcher and She-Hulk showrunners are. Again, I have never been blinded by the toxicity that has existed within the community, but I have also never been blinded by the toxicity that has existed from certain showrunners and actors who behave like they have a massive chip on their shoulders. Everyone kind of has their own wake-up call of this happening and for me personally, it was Brie Larson and Captain Marvel. To this day I refuse to watch that movie and I honestly do not think that I ever will. When she went on a tirade about white men and how the show is not meant for them, I just immediately switched off and made the choice not to support the movie any longer. One thing that I will say though is, she turned me off with her comments, I decided not to support her and that was it. What I did not do is go and post a bunch of horrible things on her social media calling her a bunch of bad names and go after every fan who did make the choice to support her. I think that is something where you lose your moral high ground. What I have learned sometimes is to just stay away no matter how hard it is. With that, there are plenty more examples of where things like this happen. Showrunners get appointed to make a show, they then turn around and mock the source material, and state that they were never a fan of the original work to begin with. This happens a lot in video game adaptations to TV. Then the writers also turn around and say well this IP that you have been a fan of for years that will now be turned into a movie or TV series is not meant for you. You are not our target audience. Of course, you are going to piss off a fan base when you do things like that. Most fans don't care if you follow the source material as long as you tell a good story but they definitely care if you respect the source material. CD Projekt Red never followed the source material of The Witcher but it was very clear that they respected the source material of The Witcher. In my opinion, Arcane did not follow the source material of League of Legends but they definitely respected it and more importantly told a good story. Just respect the IP, respect the fan base that made it popular and as long as you do that, most fans will be okay. You will still find toxic fans who are going to cry at the sight of a gay person or a black person but I can assure you that it is an extremely small percentage of the fan base who does not speak for the rest of us. Mary Sue in their article did their typical dance. They say, when you dislike a movie, you can do one of two things, ignore that movie and move on with your life or make it your entire personality, it seems. This comes as the least shocking thing in the world if you've lived through the last five years online. With Star Wars, The Last Jedi and Marvel and Disney Plus as She-Hulk, Attorney at Law series being major examples. Because somehow, a movie not being up to your own personal standards is somehow everyone else's problem. With that statement, I will say fair enough. We will move on with our lives if we do not like the show if showrunners agree to move on with their lives if they get a bad review and not call everyone toxic for not liking it. They go on to say here, it seems nearly constant that we're just all minding our own business and suddenly one of these two properties is trending because someone has decided to say something negative out of nowhere. It happens like clockwork, we're all minding our business, and bam, someone has decided to act like a movie killed their dog. Again, I feel the same way. I am minding my own business and then out of nowhere an actor or a producer decides to bash the source material of the show and go after all of the fans for not liking something. Like you said in your own article if I gave the show a negative review move on and stop pretending like I killed your dog. 
The article goes on, She Hulk, attorney at law ended in October, and yet somehow, we're still dealing with guys on the internet complaining about it. To be clear, you can dislike the show and go ahead with that opinion. What I don't like is that the internet loves to either hate you because you do like the show or completely ignore what the series is saying about toxicity in the MCU fanbase, particularly how male fans interact with people. Comic book writer Dan Slott pushed back against the idea that the show wasn't comic book accurate, and it ushered in a sea of angry replies, mainly men saying that the show divided fans by being anti-men. The reality is that the show called out toxic fans who make their entire personality hating the MCU or people who like it and yell at them for wanting to see female heroes or characters of color get their time on screen, as well. They say here that the show ended in October but people are still complaining to which I would say the same. The show ended in October and the showrunners are still complaining calling everyone who did not like the show a racist and sexist toxic person. I will move on from not liking the show when you move on from me giving it a bad review. Again I will agree that some toxic fans exist that do not like something simply because of the sex or color of a person. I have seen it with my very own eyes and I am not going to ignore that part and sit here and pretend that they do not exist. With that said though, let's also not ignore the toxic actors, producers, showrunners, and website writers like those who will call any negative review toxic. These people are quick to call out online personalities as toxic while sailing to read through their own work. If I do not like a show I will move on, but if I do not like a show you need to move on too. The problem does not just come from a fan not liking the show. There is also the problem of you proceeding to write 20 hit pieces calling everyone sexist, and as a result, of course, the fan base is going to defend themselves.